Hello and welcome to part two. We are going to be making our high resolution sculpt. So to start off for every sub tool, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start by storing a morph target. Then we're going to subdivide it a bunch of time, go back to the first level, switch our morph target, store it again. So that way we always have the same exact copy. copy so it's very important to always switch then store. Um, and then we're going to go back to the high resolution, the highest level, go back to the first level, switch, store, and redo this over and over again for every sub tool. Because what happens is that for every um, every time we subdivide, we slightly warp the initial shape, uh, the first level. So because we have smoothing turned on for this, the blade, we are going to turn turn off smoothing when we divide for the first couple of levels and then turn it back on for the uh, last levels and then we're going to start over and over again. We want to essentially want to preserve the first level of our mesh. So that's why we store a morph target of it. Then we subdivide a couple of times and that will uh, destroy our first level. Then we go back to our first level, store the morph target we had uh, switch to uh, restore it, then store it again, go back to the highest le subdivision level, then go back to the first le subdivision level, switch to go back to it, the initial morph target, it's a bit complicated I know, then store it again, you always want to have a copy of this first subdivision level, and we're doing this to preserve it. You could, uh, since it's a uh, we could have uh, used creasing to preserve our edge flow, but even creasing wouldn't uh, essentially preserve our um, initial base mesh because we want to keep our base mesh. So store morph target before you do anything, then subdivide it a couple of times, switch back to the first level, uh, hit switch to go back to your initial shape, store it again to preserve it, and so on and so forth. And so you have to do that a couple of times. Okay, now on the blade, we've subdivided it a couple of times, and now we are working on this higher version, high subdivision level, using uh, move topological, we're rounding off that blade because while trying to preserve our initial uh, level, we kept that angular edge. So using morph topology, move topological, we're rounding off that edge. And then with H polish, we're cleaning up the blade. Since we're doing a very um, stylized um, asset, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, little imperfections will uh, help sell the overall style, so it's not a big issue. Now with the pinch brush, we're going over that um, bevel, uh, the top of the beveled edge. We're restoring our reference image to find out where our um, blade is damaged. Cleaning off the blade. Doing the same thing for the hilt. Storing the morph target, subdividing, then restoring our initial shape over and over again a couple of times. Now with H polish, we're trying to refine the shape from the concept. We're, we're lacking a bit of a material to work with, so using clay buildup, we're adding a bit of a substance. So we have something to work with. Then with H polish, going back over these um, 
all these bit bits to refine the planes. Uh, we made a slight edge on the um, on the image, so we want to refine that, make it flatter, like it is on the concept. So we mask what we don't want, and then we use H polish to clean it up. H polish is a great tool for making uh, planes. Now we're a bit closer to our initial concept. Using DEM standard to carve out the transition between this uh, pommel guard and the rest of the uh, hilt. With H polish, we're cleaning the uh, part of the hilt that goes inside the uh, hilt guard. Doesn't have to be perfect because we're going for that um, hammered look, that handcrafted forged um, metal piece. Trying to define those edges. doing the same thing as we did before with the hilt guard, storing morph target, subdividing, going back to the first level, switch, store again, go back to the highest subdivision level, and so on and so forth, and until we are keeping our shape pretty nicely, so that our initial uh, pass our first level is still pretty good, uh, still has a pretty good shape. If we were to, um, if we were to create this, if we were to make the um, the low resolution sculpt in uh, an external package, this wouldn't be as important. But since we're trying to do as much as we can inside of uh, ZBrush. We want to preserve the work we did on the on the first uh, subdivision level. Same as we did before, we're defining those planes using H polish. Creating a pie group. That way we can hide that middle part and clean up the edge without affecting that center part too much. Now we're looking at our concept and we are going to start adding those cuts. Here we have a shape that's not really present in our base mesh. So with a pinch and hard polish, we're trying to conform the surface to, um, to make that crease. Here we're trying to define our planes. 
And now we're cleaning them up with the H polish. Trying to clean up that that edge with move topological. So that way we're moving uh, vertices around, but not uh, moving everything at the same time. Only trying to move what we are working on. H polish to clean that blade. Now with uh, Damien standard brush, we're going to make those cuts. Make that big cut and that small cut. Then making a bit of a random uh, strokes along the uh, the edge of the blade, uh, then smoothing them back out so it's not something very fairly too obvious. We're trying to make some chip marks, something you won't notice on first glance, but you might notice um, in the normal map. Using Trim Adaptive and Trim Dynamic, we're going to um, start and really uh, damage that um, that cut. And then with H polish, once you've made those um, once you've made those um, cuts, uh, H Trim Dynamic and Trim Adapt Adaptive is they are very great to make um, sculptural. Uh, changes to the surface. So if you want to define a plane that is not there, uh, you can do it fairly easily with uh, H polish, no, with uh, Trim Dynamic and, and Trim Adaptive. But if you want to clean that that plane afterwards, it's um, it's best to use uh, H polish. Now with a pinch brush, we're trying to bring everything back together. When you use the um, the pinch brush uh, on a f relatively flat surface here, it starts to bulge a bit. So using H polish, we're cleaning that up. Trying to conform the um, the uh, shape of the blade to match the uh, concept a bit better. Using H polish with uh, an alpha, I'm trying to um, to create a hammered look to the surface. So making slumping here with the. Uh, layer tool, I'm going over the surface, laying a bit of that uh, alpha on the surface and then smoothing it out. And then trying to hit that surface. Here I'm hammering on the surface a bit.
trying to use H-Polish, but it doesn't work with the Alpha. Wasn't paying attention. <laughs> so yeah, we're making subtle... Here I'm hammering the surface. Just hitting the surface and then wiggling the, uh, uh, the pen a bit. Trying to um, trying to have a bit of that hammered look on the surface, but not on the edge of the blade, on that thicker part. And it's something that is going to be very, very subtle, but um, yeah, subtlety is good if you have something. Not too obvious, but still there, uh, eventually it will show. Trying to move everything roughly at the same pace, so if something uh, if something is roughly done, I'm moving to the parts that are uh, still untouched, so the uh, level detail is roughly uniform. And then here with the we're we're working on the uh, leather and it's a strap. But it's still, uh, leather is still fairly organic, so it doesn't have to be uh, too clean. So here with the clay buildup brush, we are going to uh, start making uh, folds and building the solar surface up to be a bit more organic. Um, so yeah, going roughly over the uh, surface. Uh, trying to make some parts bulge in or bulge out and um, trying to match the flow of the um, of the piece so if it's uh, wrapping in a certain direction then um, we make sure the flow matches And then we're going to go over every uh, little polygroup and do more or less the same thing. Just so that we, it, it reads, uh, it reads as a, a big, um, a big form. And then we have the, um, some bulges are going to be medium size, so that's our secondary read. And then we'll have a bit of a, a light pass of uh, Damien Standard Brush to make some more refined cuts. And that's going to be our smaller details. And uh, having those um, shapes, those wraps, Having those light bumps in the surface will help in the texturing phase. Uh, that's a bit. Um, having a bit of edge will um, give us some some room, some somewhere to put some uh, weathering. And that's gonna help sell that um, leather look. Now with H polish, we're cleaning the um, the outer um, the outer parts of our polygroups of our small cylinders. We're trying to make some um, trying to have the edges be a, li a little bit sharper, not too sharp, but sharper. Um, Yeah, we're trying to make them sure that the transitions aren't too soft. And that way, it'll, it'll read better as a, a change in um, 
in uh, direction, a change in surface detail. It should also help later on when we try to uh, redo the topology on that piece to have some uh, sharp edges. Oops. Cleaning up that surface. Same thing, just going over every uh, polygroup. Make sure we have a, a sharper edge, a clean transition. A lot of polygroups to cover, to cover. <laughs> so not incredibly exciting, but something you have to do. Now with uh, move topological, we're tweaking the overall shape, so things, uh, so the way they layer each other, um, kind of shows off a little bit better, reads a little bit better. Now with the diamond center brush, we're going over some of the um, the edges we've made with the uh, clay buildup brush, and really trying to make them pop a little bit more. We want to have we want to have a. a a bit of variation between some more or less refined shapes. Don't want to have details be too sharp since it's leather. Uh, you always have a bit of a softness due to the um, uh, texture and the rendering would be something that is uh, that has some uh, uh, subsurface scattering. The uh, thickness of the leather makes it hard to um, have a very very sharp uh, shape. So the sharpest part we want to have are the uh, outer edges of the. Uh, uh, of the uh, strip of uh, leather that is wrapped around the uh, ilt. The rest shouldn't be too sharp, but we do want to have some creases. So we're defining some, we're defining some edges. Um, we're, we're defining something to work from using the clay buildup brush, then using the diamond standard, and then we're refining it uh, using H polish. What you want to do is you really want to have. Using H polish means you're, um, it's a way for you to commit. So when you're making stylized um, assets, you're usually not having, you're not relaying on a, 
big amount of detail so you're not going to overdo the here we're not going to make the uh, leather texture we're not going to sculpt in the the pores the um, the cracks the um, the scaly uh, texture from the leather we're not going to do all of that so when you're making stylized usually you're uh, simplifying things but if you're simplifying things you it doesn't mean it has to be um, mushy it doesn't have to be um, soft so if you're making something simple um, what you should try to aim for is uh, making it um, strong uh, if you're making if you're making a shape trying to push it trying to use pinch to make a crease be very creased or uh, use H polish to really define those shapes uh, the more you commit to the choices you've made the um, the better it looks the more uh, polished it looks um, you don't want to have a lot of mushy soft details everywhere um, you want to have you want to yeah, you want to make some decisions and you want to commit to those decisions. Uh, so pinch and H polish is great for stylized work because you're you're committing, you you're you're telling the viewer that you've made a choice and that um, things are deliberate. You're not it's not a big mushy lumpy thing. Even if it's simplified you should, it should still be your st you should still be making a statement so if something is flat make it very very flat if uh, if there's a crease try to push that crease try to avoid everything being uh, round here with the trim dynamic where um, damaging we're damaging the um, the edges of the pummel um, we're trying to break the um, the uh, yeah the edges give it somewhere for the uh, light to hit so the overall shape is pretty much there but we want that those edges to to have a slight angle that is different so that way it catches the light a bit better And we're going back to our blade. Now we're going to try and make that um, that middle part detail. Uh, but we've moved, moved slightly uh, away from the uh, concept. So it won't exactly match, but we'll try to um, we'll try to make it work. What we want to do is try to catch the uh, essence of the concept and then uh, try to make it work. 3D. So we've masked the shapes we wanted to extrude from the surface and then we're going to make them come out so here I'm using the uh, standard brush to make them pop out and then with the H polish but I could have used something else but we're trying to uh, bevel that shape in the um, trim dynamic and trim adaptive they they try to make planes uh, but they do not try as hard to um, conform to the um, existing flow uh, of the model whereas the um, the 
H polish tries to tries to make the uh, the plane you're trying to define work with the uh, with what is there so it's easier to transition a plane into uh, another plane using H polish because it tries to conform the entire surface whereas the um, yeah the trim trim brushes they are, they are more destructive they really uh, they really try to create those planes so it's a good thing to start to um, to create that plane with uh, the the trim brushes and then clean it up with the H polish. But I'm so used to um, working with the H polish that I can simply work my uh, my transitions into uh, into the surface. Here I'm trying to yeah trying to make that um, sharp edge in the middle. So working on both sides of the uh, shape we've defined, we're trying to make that crease happen in the middle. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going for that hammered, stylized um, look. So here you're carving out that edge and then going back to to the previous parts you've already made or trying to work that transition in. Like here, you can see me going back. I'm breaking the surface, breaking the surface, and then I'm trying to make that um, break in the um, that big change we've made, trying to make it work into the flow of the model. Breaking that edge. If it's something that was uh, carved in with tools, or if it's something that was inlaid and hammered on to um, be fitted on the health guard, it wouldn't be perfect. It would have uh, uh, have either marks from the tool or marks from the hammer. So we're not going for something that is industrial and perfect. We're going for the handmade look. shape now trying to clean that uh, that shape that um, that big sharp edge cut in the middle of the uh, pinch brush So, and smoothing parts of it to make sure it's uh, looking pretty good. Looking at the uh, model at the lowest subdivision to make sure we're not too off from our initial intent. at the model from every angle trying to assess where we are what needs to be done it's looking pretty good
that um, that blade needs a bit more love. We're trying to clean the edge. It's not going to be seen, but it's still bothering me. trying to refine those two trying to clean those two um, cuts on the blade that are a little looking a bit too soft wanna sell the idea of metal something a bit more hard and dangerous a bit more sharp so pinching and then H polish to refine those edges Add a bit more damage inside the um, the curve, the um, the slice. polish we're nearing the end now same here that that transition isn't uh, that that cut isn't too clean it's bothering me a bit so cleaning it up Looking at it, thought the um, the um, uh, leather hilt part could use a bit more love, a bit more sharper details. from every angle and I can see that some parts aren't uh, flowing like they should.
sharpening some details. So, I'm going to make those wrap, wrappings um, pop. I'm trying to look at it from the distance. Looks pretty good. Still that blade, that, that little chipping on the side bothering me. Trying to see if I can clip curve it, clip, clip it to make it flatter. Doesn't really work like I want it to work. mask and and use H polish to refine those planes a bit more and we're almost done that's uh was a fairly slower episode sculpting doing more or less what we always do in ZBrush that's the most um, standard uh, ZBrush sculpting video. Uh, here I'm just going to use the clip curve to clean off the uh, the bottom edge using move topological to bring that edge back and then I'm just going to clip it. So part two is done. Our high resolution model is ready. So in part three we're going to do the uh, low poly version and then we are going to do the UVs and export it and we would be almost done on our project. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was uh, pretty straightforward, something we've already covered on this channel, but I uh, hope I'll see you guys in the last part inside of ZBrush.